my name is Megan Reinecke. I'm a Senior Usability Specialist here at Macadamia Technologies. And I'm Anthony Hooper, a Development Manager here at Macadamia Technologies. In our first video, we talked a bit about some of the hardware considerations that you should take into account when designing for the mobile space. And in this video, we're going to talk about the UI considerations and design best practices for the various platforms in the mobile environment. And something else that we think is having a more increased importance in mobile design, which is motion design and uh, animation. The third consideration, which is the OS, the framework, the UI and the design language mm -hmm. that each one of these brings to the table. You know, the way that uh, the iPhone does things is its own particular way. Android has a baseline, but a lot of the manufacturers are pushing that baseline. And then we have the Windows Phone, which is set at the standard at a, a quite a high level, similar to the iPhone. A top level view yeah. where you can have uh, real time readings for you know, maybe you've got this many messages, maybe you've got this many notifications. You know, you have your email, your, your current date, your weather, and uh, some other things that you can scroll from side to side to get, you know, YouTubes, maybe some music or radio stations, and, and I think you can sort of customize a lot of this. So once again, they've taken that concept of a hub and they've, they've embedded it into the OS. So this one is HTC Sense, yep. which is an extension of the Android OS. Moto Nav, which is, which is uh, Motorola's version of the yep. extension of the Android OS. They're very, very different. Mm -hmm. This one, you know, has this really neat concept of flying out, and you can jump in and see what the latest. It's a very nice, well-polished UI, but incredibly different from one to the other. Yeah. So, what, and what would you see is incrementations mm -hmm. on your mails, your messages. It's not necessarily consistent from device yeah. to device because you have things like manufacturers yeah. pushing extensions of the Android OS onto their particular yeah. handsets, yeah. which and, can and customize and it for the user. A good example of that, which I like to use, is the is the keyboard. So if I start typing something like hello, it's it's floated this keyboard. This is something that HTC has done, which may have a significant impact. In this particular case, it's actually hitting the send button right here. Mm -hmm. So I actually have to choose a message before I can even send the text message. This one is, it doesn't really have the hub. All it has is sort of a bucket list of applications that you can put onto your desktop and then you can get into them like this, which is very similar to the iPhone model. If you look at the iPhone model, Windows Phone 7 has done differently. When we talk about hubs, you know, you have the concept of the people hub. Best practice in screen design and uh, navigation cues in general would tell you that um, anytime you have a menu, what you want to see is a finite list of all of your menu options. What you can see is the word flagged here is coming off the side of the screen, mm -hmm. and that's suggesting it's giving the affordance that there is more here, so you learn that you sideswipe to, to access these menu options. Now, it's brought up urgent and all, which weren't there originally. That's right. There's a bit of a learning curve. Okay. And what you'd really want to consider is, is this problematic in a usage scenario sense? Okay. So for example, um, if I know exactly where I'm going, uh, am I so accustomed to it that I know that within two swipes I get to where I wanted to be? Yeah. Is there a potential for there to be 25? The potential for the user to get lost here is quite substantial. Uh, you really need to constrain them. It's a completely different mentality when you talk about design. You can't take what you did on the iPhone or what you did on Android and bring it over to the, uh, the Windows Phone. Mm -hmm. Animations are something very important on the Windows Phone. Mm -hmm. When we select a RAM, it flies away, mm -hmm. and when I click back again, it flies back in. Mm -hmm. It's like an affordance, a visual cue that says, okay, this is where I've come from, That's um, and you go back, and, and it comes back into yeah. that same area. When you get the animations of the side swipe, you can see things scrolling in from one to the other, and you know this type of, of animation as well Thanks again for joining us for the second installment of our video series on WIGO Mobile. Uh, in this video we talked about some of the uh, design best practices and UI considerations. Some things you may want to keep in mind are, for example, when you're designing for Android, uh, how does the extension on the OS change the application? Is your application going to be custom or generic to meet all of the various requirements of the uh, different Androids? And we've, we've also showed you a little bit about motion design and how we think uh, a device or an operating system like Windows Phone 7 has become a game changer in that motion has become such an important part of its operating system and I think it's going to play a bigger and more important role in the future for all mobile platforms. And it's also changed how the traditional uh, information mapping where on mobile devices is very hierarchical. Uh, we've shown you that Windows Phone 7 with the introduction to things like hubs has created the hub-centric uh, information mapping. And so, with that in mind, I hope you join us next time, uh, or you know, keep stay tuned. We got a lot more coming.